This new Albanese Labor government's first budget is only weeks away and the debate has focused, strangely enough, on stage three tax cuts. Tax cuts already legislated under the coalition, which Labor voted for from opposition, which it promised to keep. Here's the Treasurer and the Skills Minister speaking today. When it comes to the stage three tax cuts, uh, our position hasn't changed. This would not be coming in until July 1, uh, 2024. We're talking almost two years. Uh, we've got other matters to deal with, and we don't. And our decision, our position on this matter, has not changed. Phil Curry is the Australian Financial Review's political editor. He joins me now in the studio. Good to see you, Phil. Thanks, Chris. You've led a lot of the reporting on this. Just how seriously are Labor considering either rejecting or changing these tax cuts? Oh, they're not considering rejecting them. There's no talk of abolishing them. They're just giving... They would fiddle with them or delay them? No, give them a haircut. Just, yep. just, just say trim them, trim them down at the top end so everyone still gets a bit but not as much as you, know, you possibly would have got. So... What they've got in mind, I'm not sure. I know when they were in opposition, Chris, when they were wrestling with supporting these or not, they came up with a few proposals, you know, to limit them. They never liked them, right? No, they've never. No, not, not stage three. They've never believed in them, but um, they felt compelled to vote for them after the, uh, the 19 election loss because Scott Morrison linked the stage three legislation with the stage two yep. legislation and instead of standing their ground, they said, oh, look, let's just wave them through. But that being said, they took... Them to the, they, they went to the election promising not to touch them and now clearly <laughs> clearly they're looking quite seriously at giving them a, giving them a haircut. To, to me, there are two key questions about this. One's sort of economics and one is sort of politics. The, the, let's start with the economics. And we know the economic situation now is pretty dire. Mm. But fiddling with these tax cuts now, given they don't come in for two years, mm. is not going to change anything about their current economic not, challenge. Not, not currently. It's going to have no impact on inflation or these sorts of things. I mean, if Jim Chalmers... Yeah, you know, if the tax cuts were going to start next week, well, you'd have a case because you'd have the yeah, same situation exactly. you had in Britain. You know, yeah, yeah, you, crazy you, time for a monetary tax cut. and fiscal policy at each other's. But you know, the, the, the main excuse the Treasurer uses is you know the cost of these five unavoidable and desirables. He calls them defence, interest on debt, aged care, health, and uh, the NDIS are blowing out, and therefore, you know, we need to cover those. The, the only the only problem with that, Chris, is that that was apparent before the election. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it was obvious. I mean, we knew from the aged care royal commission, we knew from health costs, we knew the NDIS has been running off the rails for years. Yep. You know, the actors. So none of that is new. But so I think that that's the credibility problem here. Is that, you know, this is an argument that has merit, but it should have been made before the election, yep. not now. And I think that's 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 where they'll get into trouble. I well, mean, that's the political problem, isn't it? That's yeah. the other other mm. side of this. As I was saying, you have broken promises that can just cripple a government right from the mm. outset. Now, they can point to what went on in the UK. They can point to changing mm. economic circumstances. But have you, as you say, most of these issues were, were, mm. were, were evident earlier. Would, would a change here, depending on how big it is, I suppose, mm. really fatally undermine their, their trust with the electorate? Yeah, look, it depends what they do. I mean, clearly, you know, we've seen examples with LAW, with Paul Keating, you know, Tony Abbott's 2014 budget and Julia Gillard's no carbon tax promise. You yep. know, they, they can really harm you. I, you. Look, there's definitely an integrity risk here. That if, you know, for three years, Labor branded Scott Morrison a liar, promised to restore integrity to politics, and now, boy, this was to be a pretty egregious broken promise. There, there is a risk. I think in the, you know, what they're sort of relying on is there's a resentment towards people on high incomes. So, mm. you know, it won't be sort of as wide. Yeah, there's the politics of envy. You know, card de demonising people who earn money. Yeah. Um, and the Greens will back it. A lot of the independents will back it, uh, apart from uh, Sophie Scomps and uh, Kylie Tink, who both are, are quite not keen on this. You don't yeah. think it's premature to be doing this. The other Teals are, are all Zoe up Zoe Daniel and uh, yeah, Monique Ryan, they're all keen on it. it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the Greens are up for it and Jackie Lambie and David Pocock. So there'll be a fair bit of parliamentary support for it. They ought to whack a special tax on those teal seats, <laughs> oh, I reckon, <laughs> a special wealth tax <laughs> so on the so teal seats. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. just tell me this, though. It, it occurs to me that w what suits Labor right in the here and now is that there is this debate around this hmm. rather than on cost of living. They can't d avoid well, the cost of living discussion for long, but it's not something they really want to be talking about just now. No, but, you know, there's a budget coming up and, and, and they're limited what they can do on cost of living. I mean, without making inflation worse, there's already going to be childcare and, you know, cheaper prescription drugs, which are election promises in the budget. And, and don't forget, I mean, what everyone doesn't mention at the moment, and possibly because it's from the last government, is anyone who filed the tax return since July 1 is getting the Lomito. 10 million people are getting up to $1,800 
uh, back as a refund with their tax return because Morrison and Frydenberg extended the Lamido. So that's $8 billion which is going into the economy as we speak. Probably not the right time for no, that. No, 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 one, no one talks about it because it wasn't, you know, the current government it wasn't their measure. But that's, that's, you know, that's pretty significant and I assume if the Liberals were still in power, they'd be highlighting that as a, as a cost. But you've got to be just, careful because this stuff can make the situation worse too. Just one quick question yeah. without notice. Yeah. Uh, I bumped into uh, Prime Minister Manassas Sogavare right. uh, in the corridor later. He'd Did just he? been in his meeting yeah. with Anthony Albanese. Is there any readout on that meeting at all? We know oh, they had I, the I, meeting. I, that's I, all. Only the pro forma. Yeah, it was a constructive meeting and we love each other and yeah, 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 yeah nothing. Yeah, the sort of standard... Statement that comes out after Indeed. these things. Will, you know, Pretty important meeting, but we won't, very, yeah, yeah, we won't know exactly what went on. See what well, we will hopefully eventually. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. Great to talk to you, Phil. Thanks. Pleasure, Chris. Phil Curry there from the Australian Financial Review.